dive into it. So this is episode three. It's called Smoke Signals. The synopsis is pretty much this. Dexter is forced to move Matt's body after learning that Chief Bishop is bringing in a dog team. The unknown killer who abducted the homeless girl shoots her down, and after allowing her to escape from a bunker, Dexter also sees a tipsy Kurt enjoying the snow and finding it suspicious, inquires about it, and offers to drop him home. Kurt says he is relieved because his son just video called him. We'll get to that later. Harrison begins school and be and befriends a classmate who is being bullied. Later, thawing the bully's attack by clenching his throat, Dexter assures Deborah that his light, latest kill is a one and done kill, as he wants to focus on being a good father. So, I like how this actually opens up. If you think about it. Because it reminds me of so much of like Clint Eastwood. I just want these kids off my lawn. But as instead, it's more like I want these cops off my off my lawn. I just want to have a normal life with my son. I want to be a better, better father. I don't want to kill anymore. It's been eleven years since I've killed somebody, and now I'm having to bury, you know, cover up everything now that I've done. And also, too, is this uh, Harrison also got into high school now, and. He's having to adapt into a new life at the high school. As a matter of fact, he joined the wrestling team. He's also doing the placement test. And then the placement test, they said that he cheated because he's actually the one who scored the highest in the school. And, of course, they wanted to retake it again. And he gets pissed off because of the fact that, you know, he scored the highest. And he doesn't think that he should wind up having to retake it again or anything like that. And... I definitely agree with Harrison on that. I don't think the kid cheated. Dexter said, well, if you did good the first time, you can go ahead and do it again. But what's your thoughts on the opening and stuff like that? I mean, I thought it was fitting. Again, it picked, again we're not time jumping or anything. We're continuing right when the last episode left off when Matt's dad had that bullshit heroic speech saying, hey, what, what, what have I done for you? Like, I mean, I, I again, it's it's a better speech from Kristen Stewart from uh, Huntsman about her rallying the troops. And again, it's not saying much because this speech is pretty bad. It's just you can read between the lines, like of how bullshitty this this uh, his speech was. Like, we need to help my fa- save my son. When mo- the audience knows the son's dead and it's right underneath everybody's feet. Because like that, that was the last image. Like you see the body, and then you see the gun underneath everybody's feet, where the fire pit is. And Dexter's this. Dexter's that old man. He's like he's not old yet, but he's that old man. He's like, you damn kids, get off my lawn! Or like that, 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 that kind of stuff. And it's just like, and it's fitting because they invaded his space to for a wild goose chase. And, and it's like, and he just wants people to leave. Um. And then, yeah, Harrison joined the wrestling team. And no, it's not the good wrestling that you see on TV that with AEW, not that WWE crap. That, that That's a has-been company now, but no, eight more. It's not the flashy stuff, but it's the uh, it's the uh, the stuff you see at the Olympics, that type of wrestling. So don't, everybody don't get upset that we're going to see some good flashy wrestling. He's like, no, it's not. But, I mean, it's good that Harrison's branching out. He's trying to get in, He's trying to get accustomed to everything. Um, and the reason Harrison's just pissed was because for taking that test again is because he he didn't think Dexter believes him when he Dexter when Harrison says I didn't cheat. I don't I don't believe Harrison cheated at all because he's got his dad's smarts because his dad's pretty smart too. So I figured, and I think Har- Harrison's pretty smart too. He knows some stuff I don't even think his dad knows. So, but the fact that he passed the test both times. Yeah, and then um, but there's 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 a lot to discuss over this one. But yeah, I thought I like the opening. I mean, I thought it was a solid episode. I mean, it's like it's. I mean, I'm 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 intrigued to where this is gonna go. And, and, and that's, I am that's too. Episode. And I just want to say this. I'm thinking the reason why he's the smartest one in the class as well. Not only does he have his dad smarts, but he went to Argentina. I bet the school system in Argentina is probably ahead of its uh. Uh, you know, ahead of its class when it comes yeah. to the United States and stuff like that. So, of course, his IQ level is high, but that just makes it even higher because of the fact that the education is probably 10 times better than what it is in the United States. That's just me yeah. assuming. But uh, 
Also, too, then also, too, you're dealing with uh, Angela telling Dexter about the video footage in the in the woods and about heat signatures. Matt's father, Kirk, uh, thinks Angela is also incompetent of her job because of the fact that she was going to call up the search during a missing glove. And Angela starts doubting herself. Then also, too, Dexter's also thinking, oh, crap, I'm in a whole heap of trouble because of the fact that, you know, because of the fact that there's heat signatures. He didn't think about video footage or anything like that being in the woods. And seeing the heat signatures and things like that is like, crap, I didn't think about this. I didn't go through that angle of thinking that there's some type of wilderness cameras that's paying attention to me. And so then, of course, they get the CSI guy. Great and scene. Yeah. But also, too, I like how whenever he walks, when Dexter walks into the room and he sees the zoologist first, he sees Angela and all that. And he goes, I'll be damned if I'm going to be taken down by a zoologist and a couple of uh, small town cops mm-hmm. to just summarize. And then also, too, whenever he sees the CSI guy, Gracie, he's actually a klutz. He look, doesn't look like he's competent of anything. Or anything like that. He's dropping his own supplies. And it also sounded like something broke. So I'm thinking, this guy does not know crap. Dexter's going to get away with this. Just like when we saw the drone. And then the, the cop winds up crashing the drone into a tree. So I'm thinking, okay, Gracie is incompetent of his job. While Kurt is trying to make Angela feel incompetent. This guy doesn't even look like he knows how to do blood analysis. Then all of a sudden, you get into the scene where... Gracie's taking the blood sample of the deer and he's also um, doing the same type of monologue dialogue that Dexter does when explaining the blood and how it connects to people. And I'm like, Ooh, okay. So Dexter is in a thin line right here. What about I you? mean, yeah, I thought it was again, I thought it was a great scene. This, the inner, the inner thoughts of Dexter really sells this scene. Cause what this CSI guy does, that's what Dexter did for how many years in the past seasons one through nine. He was a blood splatter expert for years. So he knew all the ins and outs of this stuff and he worked for Miami PD. And when he's helping out the CSI guy, he goes, Hey, can I tag along? I've always wanted to do this. So just him, him portraying the act and then seeing him do it. And he goes, damn, that's exactly what I would do. Like, and then Dexter was like, shit <laughs> he just realized that and then uh, again that, that's the, and then the, like, i mean looks can be deceiving like masuka he's a creepy pe- he's a, he's a he's just a creepy person yet he's good at his job so again the whole looks can be deceiving thing so it definitely played out with that sequence but yeah and then and then to the, see the cameras at the forest like i didn't even know there'd be cameras in the forest but they get it was case it was their reserve it was the uh was that that family's the uh, the Native Americans reserve section? So you can't kill on that land. There's like laws, or not laws, but like rules and regulations to that you can't kill on reservations. And the fact that there's cameras up there, I didn't I, like that was like whoa, okay, I didn't see that. They these people know their stuff. So Dexter is Dexter is going to outsmart everybody. But then again, he's it's going to be very. It's not going to be as like a, a It's not going to be like a a landslide like 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 uh just like a football game like the the indianapolis colts blew out the buffalo bills it's not gonna be that type of a landslide it's gonna be a tight eight game like green bay and minnesota in a sense um so it's gonna be a very close game down to the wire dexter's gonna win because of course he's gonna win unless not i don't know that could be throwing us off but but still again uh but i thought that was a great scene and then and then how dexter was like all right I get up my game. I got to one up these people, and that's what that, and then that that's what he ends up doing. But again, and you guys, yeah, I'm not gonna let a zoologist let me. But that infrared stuff, I'm like, this is how technology's changed in nine years. I mean, it shows in the show. It shows in the show, and it goes to show you like all the stuff that Dexter did in previous seasons. He was able to get away with because our technology was not there at that time, so he was able to move around and do things differently. Yeah. This is a whole new scenario with him. Aside from him being in this frozen countryside, 
in upstate New York. He's dealing with new technology, stuff that we didn't even think about our own selves either because we're so used to the technology that we had back in the old seasons. So we didn't, we weren't, here's the thing. We didn't think about that. I'm actually converting that over onto this season because we're so used to seeing how, you know, of the old technology, Mm -hmm. seeing that being played out in this season, teaming up with the present times. I like it. I like that because now it gives it more of a suspense ride Yeah, to knowing if Dexter's going to get caught or not. And also, Dexter's not working for the sheriff's department. <clears throat> He's not working in the blood no. splatter expert. Like that's that's how Dexter seemed to got the upper hand because he he knew the stuff ahead of time because he he worked in the building. That's what made this 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 the this, this show Dexter so intriguing. A serial killer that works as a blood splatter expert in Miami PD. I mean, the idea right. is like He's a know, civilian this go around. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So he's gonna have to use he's use that and one up himself. He's like, and, and the scene, like in this episode, he seems to keep doing it every single time. And that, and that, that, that's, that's great that he's able to adapt, not stay like secondary. He's, he's adapting every single time. Like, all right, thinking on his feet, because he's got a lot to think about a lot to deal with and a lot to like maneuver past. Cause again, we're dealing with a very, very small town, not Miami PD, like not Miami. No. We're in, you, we're in like middle of nowhere. Right. And I just want to say this to Brandy too. I, I I really enjoyed watching this with you and seeing what you thought of this episode because you've never seen any of the other Dexter seasons. So I would pause it and explain certain things to get her caught up a little bit. Mm-hmm. But she she's enjoying it from this perspective. Yeah. But I just want to point this out though too. You would think that Miami Metro, who's a big, huge city, would figure things out. But in a small uh, upstate New York town is actually putting stuff together better than they did. I mean, Which is really have, ironic. Yeah. Well, you didn't have Joey. You didn't have you didn't have incompetent Joey to deal with. Or you didn't have well, Maria LaGuerta like trying to like sweep her way to the top. Like you were, you have people that actually care about their job in a sense. But then again, it's kind of like Miami PD. People are getting bought off like crazy. Like there's there's probably gonna be some corruption because that seems to be how this is gonna go. Like we that I mean again, it's like it's a different area, but there's probably gonna be the corruption. There's probably gonna be a mole in the inside because because that seems to be because that's classic Dexter because that's that seems to be how this is gonna go. Is it gonna go? I don't know. I, I'm just paying off my my ideas from the past few seasons of Dexter because I've seen them all, and I just know how this usually try goes. But um, I think the interesting aspect to this one is the uh, the uh, the Jamie Chun character. She's the uh, she's the blogger that like uh, that shows up, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm this into true crime, and then when you find out she's a she's a like she's like she, yeah she's a true crime enthusiast. And yet she wants to be involved in this. So I'm intrigued of how that s- this section's going to go. Because she might be the one that picks up on the stuff before the cops do. It might find out like what really happened to Matt before the cops do. Again, I don't know. But it's going to be interesting where this is going to go. Uh, um, but yeah, so... Um, and then, and then so when she shows up, uh, there, there's some a lot of other great aspects to this. Especially Deb. Um... I like Deb more in this episode than I did in the first two because De- we, Deb's crazy. I'm just gonna say that Deb's like Deb's crazy. And I think she's representing how crazy Dexter's mind's going right now, like just all the thinking and stuff. And I think this episode really it really shines on that about how, what Dexter has to deal with and think about. Um, but the aspect that made me chuckle the most is when Dexter is sitting in the car. Um, and he's talking to Deb and, and they're talking about like where we're gonna hide the body because Deb's like, hmm. you know they're gonna find your find your fucking brother like find the fucking body, bro. Like underneath your fireplace. You gotta figure out where to put it. And he goes, I have an idea. And she's sitting next to a uh, a wood chipper and she's throwing the body parts in the wood chipper and she's sitting there like, Yeah, like screaming ferociously, like like celebrating it's like the fake bloods get on the like the students walking by 
And De Dexter's like, no, that's like Fargo. That's not happening. Like, I just thought that sequence was so funny. The dark humor by Dex. I did too. Because <clears throat> I like how Deb actually asked Dex. He goes, what about the uh, lake? No, it's frozen. Well, what about this? No, can't go there. Well, what about this idea? No, can't do that. Then there's also the part that he's, and I even said this in like last episode where I said, this feels like a Fargo uh, kind of atmosphere. All of a sudden, Deborah just goes on ahead and does the witch, uh, does that whole entire deal that you mentioned. And I like the dark humor in it, where she's just putting the body parts and it's just spraying the students as they're walking. And it's just like invisible blood. But I liked, it wasn't forced. It was actually pretty interesting. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think the, the whole, his whole I, and I like the aspect what Dexter said about no, I can't do it in the lake because some random, like some random idiot fisherman will find, will, will like catch the, I like, catch the, I like, catch the body like a fish, and then just Dexter's reasoning for not hiding it in the lake, which I thought because it seemed to allude that he was going to put the body in the lake, so it was a little misdirection there because that's usually what, like that's usually what Dexter does with dumping in the lake in like the middle of nowhere. But the fact that he is in the middle of nowhere, it's such a small town, some like that would pop up instantly. And that's why he's like, okay, I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to bury it underneath my fireplace or underneath where everybody's walking. And I thought that was a legit idea. And then once people start, like, and then once they brought the dogs and, and then Dexter had that, doing that whatever, like, fan at night when, like, in front of the cameras, like, gra like trying to get the sniff of the, like, I mean... For him being a small town, Dexter is so resourceful. He, like he definitely knows what he's doing, especially since he hasn't killed in nine years. Right, but he it's like he never lost his Miami Metro, uh, you know, instincts. So yeah. he's able to give him like little small insight stuff. Not enough to where it can convict him, but just enough mm -hmm. to where it can throw him off track. Yeah. as well. But also, too, another thing that I want to mention is this. Uh, Dexter also gets a call from the school about Harrison scoring the... Well, like we mentioned. But also, too, Harrison's also throwing shade at Dexter. Mm. At that point, though, too. Because, remember that? Yeah, I remember that. I think it's just... I, I definitely, I think... When going back the whole like deal when Dex like when uh, Harrison was in Argentina, there could be other stuff too that Hannah taught him, because Hannah was pretty smart too for like the killer that she was. So she she was pretty resourceful. So again, Harrison probably had the best of both worlds. Again, best of best most messed up worlds, but I think he's in a really good situation because he knows he has a good attention to detail, and like his attention to detail is like that but yet he's quick he, it, it, so he's saying the stuff dexter's head and dexter usually would say in his head harrison's like yeah like my dad but my dad was just somewhere i don't know but the, the constant shade he's thrown at him is just like i mean you feel bad for him and then again you kind of don't because you feel bad for dexter because you, you have no idea how much dexter would want it to be with them in argentina but there, there, there's so much Harrison just doesn't know and these constant quips at his dad. Yeah, it's funny, but it's like, you have no idea of, of how, what Dexter went through. And cause you don't, you don't know the true story of what happened to your real mom. And you, no. you don't know the whole story of how she was again. Anybody hasn't seen season four. Don't avert your ears. Rita dead bathtub covered in blood. Like, like kind of like fill into the top and Harrison's sin in it. Yeah, that that's that's literally what happened in season four. Um, I'm not going to tell you who killed her, but Rita's death right. is probably one of the most shocking things I've ever seen on a series because it is right. so brutal. It's worse than the chainsaw of how Dexter witnessed his mom getting killed. This is the worst right. part. Yeah, my but, thing is this, you know. Harrison went out searching for Dexter. Mm -hmm. You know, in Miami. Yeah. 
my thing is this. What if Harrison does know that his mom died? What if he did go to that ch- his childhood house that he grew up on? Because don't forget, yeah. people could he could have talked to Angel. He could have talked to anybody. Masuka. Yeah. Masuka. And be like, yeah, I know your dad. Yeah, um, your mom was killed and a be- killed, and you were in the blood. Yeah, and also too, what if Harrison? And to me, whenever he grabbed uh, Zach by the throat, to me, that's an indication that I'm thinking that Harrison might be a serial killer, or having sort of having like serial killer kind of vibes as well, it's because possible. the way he grabbed. The- his yeah. throat and then threatening him like Dexter on the outside. He's innocent on the out. You know what I'm saying? On the outside, yeah. he's totally deadly. And I'm thinking that's what's going on with Harris. I think that he's got the same kind of deal that Dexter has. I yeah. think that that serial killer gene went to, went on to follow Harrison. That's my it's thing definitely- on it. It's definitely possible. I mean, like Harrison, the way he's know how to pickpocket like his dad did, like like the break breaking and entering like his dad does. Like, um, like I we need to see his clothing line because he has if he has the exact same like the the brown shirt and the green like the green cargo pants. Like, then we know father like son because that's the because every time you see Dexter in that outfit, you know he's about to kill somebody. I don't know because Sean wanted to be for when when Dexter was in his peak uh, the show. Sean wanted to be him for Halloween. He had the hair just like <laughs> right, almost like Dexter. He wanted the same outfit and he wanted to be like Dexter for Halloween, <laughs> but oh, that wow. didn't work out. Yeah, um, but I don't know. Like we'll, we'll see. I mean, again, I, I, again, if he's the serial killer, that's fine. I just don't want him to end up like uh, them revealing that he killed Hannah. Hannah never had cancer. I said this in the first episode or like or the last episode. I don't want that to happen because I liked Hannah and I didn't want her like that. I think if you if you did it like what Dexter did it to her to his uh, his 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 favorite uh, his uh the the woman that he uh, gave her the key lime pie to and he injected it just to make her have a peaceful just to kind of off her a mercy killing. If he did it to that to Hannah, yeah, that's fine. I'm okay with that because it's just he's doing what his dad did to a friend. But if he, Harrison really killed Hannah for the sake of killing her, not and then that she didn't have cancer, then that's going to be like a whole different like curveball. I don't want them going to, but I don't think they're going to go down that route. I think it's going to be him. Just like that, uh, that pie that Dexter winds up giving to the woman who works in the filing thing yeah. over at the, uh, Miami at the, PD or you know, records. Miami or PD. Right, and gives gives her a mercy kill. So I'm thinking yeah. that's gonna be what that's gonna be played off at. I mean, but um, another thing I want to mention is this: Deb, yeah, she had a moment of the dark humor and stuff like that. But the thing that made me like when she put the gun to Dexter's head. Oh yeah. And explaining the context of what Dexter is doing, that was really intense. It kind of reminded me of Fight Club with Brad Pitt. And I know I just broke a rule, but oh well. Um, but because I'm not supposed to talk about Fight Club. But oh, yeah. anyways. Well you but, broke the first two rules. The first rule is we're not allowed we're, we're not supposed to talk we can't you're not allowed to talk about Fight Club. Rule number two, you're not allowed to talk about Fight Club. So you broke the first two rules of Fight Club. <laughs> well, damn. But, you know, it has that, to me, it has that whole entire sense where mm-hmm. Deb is pointing the gun at him. And it also reminds me of Brad Pitt from Fight Club. And it has that um, inner, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Basically, this inner struggle between the mm-hmm. two of them. And stuff like that. I liked it. It was very good on how he, she was trying to bring it into her perspective of what's going on around him because he's mm-hmm. so busy trying to cover up stuff that he's not realizing the implications that's following him. Mm-hmm. So I like I mean, that. I think, 
I think Dev's the perfect choice to be his passenger this season. Like, honestly, like, I think she you get more out of her than you did of Harry. Harry was good. He was the wise one. But when he went, like, pretty much, he, but the thing is, he didn't yell at Dexter. He just, he just, he just had that, that voice that kind of suit, like, calmed Dexter down. Deb has no remorse for him at all. So she's going to, if, if you, if you did something that, she's going to laugh in your face. She's going to, she's going to, like, she's going to do stupid stuff. But then again, and, and, and I think it's perfect for, for Deck. I mean, she, she's crazy in this episode. Like, I like Deb back when she was alive. But, like, again, but I think she's the perfect choice for his dark, for his inner thoughts in this one. It, 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 there's some serious mo- moments in it where she's intense, like, so intense. Like, you're like, all right, you need to calm that down a little bit. It's a little, it's a little too intense. It's, it's scaring the viewers. And then there's moments where, like, where she did in this episode was perfect. You had the dark moments, and then you had the funny, the, the dark comedic moments where her putting, her doing the wood chipper stuff. Like, I mean, it's, it, it's very, this one you see more of both sides of that, and I think it fits perfectly because it's all going on in Dexter's head of how crazy effed up it is right now of what he's having to do, and so I think I think it's perfect that Deb is the is the person that's that that's portraying the dark passenger. I think so too. I like that as well. Um, Brandy also said one of her favorite parts was when they sent the that inappropriate pictures to the douchebags. Yeah, Ethan. Yeah. Let's talk about Ethan for a minute. Yeah. Though, because I feel bad for the dude. The dude's been tortured since elementary school with Zach and Scott torturing him, tormenting him. And to find out that his online girlfriend is not who he thought it was, it was just them being cat or being catfished. That That's yeah. horrible. That's, that's it really is. Because he feels like because here's the thing, I can relate to Ethan and stuff like that. And it feels like you finally have the one person that can understand you. That's gonna and then you find and all that has just been ripped away. Because now yeah. he doesn't have anybody. No. And then I like how, you know, we wind up seeing Dexter's son come in. And Harrison, he winds up sitting there. He has two choices. He can, and it's like making choices, the best choice for himself. Either I can go on ahead, be popular, or I can go on ahead, sit with somebody as an outcast and make him, make him feel like he has a friend. And that's what Harrison did. He made yeah. a friend with Ethan, explaining to him, hey, look, your girlfriend is, you're being catfished. He just holds him point blank, and that's what I like about him. He doesn't yeah. hold anything in. He tells him point blank, you're being catfished by Scott and Zach. And then he explains the whole background of him being tormented in elementary school. I like that. I mean, I relate to Ethan, too. Like, again, all the bullying I went through for, like, all the years of school. Never went that route. But it was just more of the physical stuff, like push, like that, making fun of my height, size, whatever. Um, again, I, I didn't like. Again, I didn't care about that. But the fact that Harrison went up to the kid, even and like helped him out, like and all that stuff, that I like that. Well, this is going to lead to you one of your theories that for the next episode of how you like what might actually happen, um, and we can get into that in a bit. But you were right about one part, the bear. You're right about the bear, but not, right. not the but I was also right about, about the bear. bear. <laughs> because here's the thing. I thought he was going to get a mat snack. He almost got a Dexter snack. So, yep. <laughs> but I like the part where Dexter's going into the cave because he's looking at different areas. And then he goes on ahead and tells Fred, hey, can you hold my, sp- can, can I go on ahead and help the search crew? He goes, yeah, go on ahead. And so he finds a cave. He goes into the cave. And as he's going into the cave and everything, uh, that's when, and that's when, of course, he winds up seeing the bear. The bear winds up chasing him out of the cave. To me, if, if I was if I was Dexter, I would have went on ahead, brought Matt's body parts with me, and then since caves have holes, 
stuff like that in different places, and he saw that beer, I would have just drunk the parts at the beer. <laughs> but he gets, but Dexter gets chased out of the um, cave, and then of course Harrison, well, and Angela calls him up on the phone. He goes, "Hey, want to come over?" He goes, "No, I got things to do." Typical Dexter trying to cancel out on things while he's trying to either kill somebody. Or he's trying to hide a body. And he goes, no, I got things to do. Well, I do too, but, uh, you know, but my daughter invited Harrison over to eat. He's <laughs> just being he really goes, pissed. Sure, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, be, right, I'll be right over. <laughs> like, he, like, his reaction, like, fuck. Like, it, it's like, can I get some peace and quiet now? I'm like, it's like. Damn it! I, that's what he was like. That's why I always hate being in relationships or whatever. Like that's what he probably was thinking about. But yeah, he's like, yeah, I'll be right over. Yeah, it sounds like fun. Um, and then and then we get into the uh, the Harrison and Audrey uh, storyline. Um, I can cover that part for you there, so you can rest your voice a little bit. But uh, if that yeah, then thanks, that's man. Like that. I do appreciate okay. that. So um, because so Harrison, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, I want to get in after we covered this. I do want to cover the serial killer aspect of it, the history right. part again this is a minor of that but it's kind of it's that uh, it's a uh, harrison and all uh, and um and audrey they they uh audrey's asking questions about like or harrison's asking her about okay um why, why you hang out with zach and them and you go oh, i always hate those guys or whatever so anyway they're they're going to go pick up some meat um for the dinner and then and then she they find the deer the deer that that the the the, the cool the white deer that's been like that, that HP, like the, the, uh, police department never really figured out. And Audrey and like, okay, I got a plan of where we're going to do it. Like we're going to, they're, they essentially, they want to give the deer back to the reservation because it's kind of like one of those tradition things and it's the night, that's the right thing to do. So, so they coming up with the plan and then I think they have the, I think they had the deer in the car again. I'm not hundred percent sure. They didn't really talk about that. And then the car breaks down, go figure. So and then so Harrison takes uh, takes her cell phone to go try to get uh, a tow truck service, and then this creep and this creepy douche shows up, and we'll get to him in a sec because it, it, seeing his face kind of threw me off in my humble brag prediction in the last episode how I said her um, Matt's dad is the one that's been capturing these missing women and killing them for sport. And once I saw his face, I saw, okay, I see the similar eyes, just the complexion, this is body type. And he was creepy. So creepy. Um, um, yeah, it's so creepy to the point that I thought Audrey was going to get kidnapped. I really thought she was going to get abducted. I really thought he was going to put her into the car and kidnap her. I really thought about that. And then luckily it didn't happen. And then... And then they had the dinner scene. Um, the dinner scene's that, and that's when they just they hold it. Uh, they they push. They move. Uh, like they 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 do the plan of Angela, and they just like they all agree to it to give the give the deer back to the reservation so they can do a proper burial or fire ceremony, which then gives Dexter the idea. Hey, I'm gonna throw Matt's body into the incinerator and throws it in there. Pretty much, Matt's gonna be covering the area like LeBron James covers, like covers with the pow with the powder, like like that. That whole town's gonna be covered with Matt's ashes. And then we get to the ending, and and John will go well, and cover that. Please. Yeah, I'll, there's two things I want to cover real quick. Two, number one, the serial killer. While Dexter's trying to cover up everything in the woods. And stuff like that. You have the serial killer who you think that's going to let the girl go away, but he doesn't. And the song Runaway is playing, which is a 1960s, 50s song. To me, this this can dictate two things. The serial killer is old, which we already know from the facial, you know, just from the eyes and stuff. But knowing that it's 50s and 60s music also tells me that's, that's really is a really like an older person, and also too, runaway is referring to the the girl running away from the danger of that she, which she's in. But he also hunts her for prey, and he kills her with a sniper rifle. At that moment, Dexter hears the shot being blasted, 
And then he's like, ooh, I hope that I'm not going to be prey tonight, basically. And then, okay, so the same with Matt, where, where he's throwing Matt's thing in the, into the fire. This reminds me of Ray Splitz, uh, Spilzer, I think that's her name. There was a serial killer on one of the seasons where this is where Dexter winds up cremating him to get mm. rid of the body. So this is our second time seeing him cremate somebody. <clears throat> so, anyways, like you said, ashes are everywhere. It reminds me of that Steven Spielberg movie, Schind Schindler's List, because of the ashes being around the city. Mm -hmm. And so when Dexter pulls up, the guy is not mourning over his son. He's happy. He looks like he's drunk out of his skull, to be honest with you. He looks at Dexter, and Dexter says this to him. He said, why are you happy? He goes, oh, I just got um, I, 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 something great just happened. I got to talk to my son. And we're seeing ashes. It's not snow. It's ashes falling from the sky. And I also like how Dexter said this. This might be the closest that Matt and his father might have ever, ever felt close to each other. But he FaceTimed him. Matt supposedly FaceTimed him. And also, too, remember what Harrison did for the bullet whenever he sent that text message and he altered it with that GIF? Mm-hmm. What if Harrison was pretending to be Matt to cover for Dexter? Possible. I mean, that, that, that again's possible. Or it could be the true the true crime enthusiast because she wants like, or she might because again, she's the uh, she's she has the blog and she seems to be very techno tech tech savvy. And again, again, I don't know if we're speaking. She could be involved with this one too. Again, there's could be there could be a lot of stuff going on, but that Harrison thing that then again he was having the conversation with Ethan. He was having that too. So again, I don't know. I mean, mm. it, I mean, and again, because the, the other theory you had is like so. The next episode has the preview like Dexter, um, like Dexter dealing with the aftermath of the like the Kurt's uh, Matt's dad's going around town saying hey, he's alive, he's alive. And Dexter's like probably oh shit. Then he gets a text message alert that the school's on lockdown, and apparently Harrison is uh, a hair Her Her and the Harrison's deemed the hero. Um, did you want to mention right. what your theory might be of that? Um, because okay. it'd be kind of a, so, a sad idea though if it happens, but wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, and this is actually touching in areas that we've never seen Dexter reach in before, but. I'm not going to go and explain the scene in full detail, but when Harrison and Ethan are having a FaceTime conversation, Ethan sent, uh, winds up showing him some artwork on how, how he would deal with the bullies. It's a comic book strip of him dressed as the Punisher, killing Ethan, ripping a hole through Ethan, not, not Ethan, but through Zach's Zach. chest and ripping it out like the Punisher. And, it, and, of course, Harris is like, what? You're supposed to be the Punisher? He goes, yeah, something like that. So what I'm thinking is this. The reason why Harrison might be redeemed a hero is, number one, he could, and it could be a Columbine issue. Because I could tell that Harrison was not for it. He felt really uncomfortable just based off of the facial expressions. But it feels like a Columbine issue. A Columbine situation. You know? So maybe they might actually do a Columbine kind of scenario in Dexter. Or maybe he reported it before it could actually go down. And got Ethan the help that he needs. I hope so that's it's two things. Second that just, yeah. I hope it's the second yeah. option. I do not. I, I mean, for Dexter being, Dexter can be out there. I do not want, especially with the whole trend of what's going on in the like in the the real world of all this shootings and stuff. I do not want to see see it live on Dexter, Ethan doing that. Like I really don't want to see that. The aftermath, not really. But if it's Harrison stops him before it gets in that, which I think Harrison 
I think might be the most legit option. But the fact that the school's on lockdown, something might happen again. I don't know. We were just speculating, but I mean, poor, I mean, you feel bad for Ethan, but not to the point of that to go that route. Again, it could happen. Again, I don't know. We're, we're not we're not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just hoping it doesn't because we don't need that. We don't need more controversy with our TV shows. Like we don't need it to get no. canceled just because that. But I, I I'm leaning because towards the option, but I digress. That's what I'm hoping for though, too, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Because you know how in the news and media it says I wish somebody would have actually stopped it before it could happen. Yeah. I wish somebody would have reached out to us and looked at the main problem. So this could be their way of actually doing that in a sense. Yeah. But that's the next episode. We'll do, we're doing with the lockdown because Dexter gets alerted on his phone that the school's in lockdown. He runs into the area where everybody's at and he goes, where's Harrison? And that's the promo for the next episode. So we'll see. And it's titled H for Hero. So... It, it's definitely seeming it really fixed Harrison for hero. It really, it just seems to be making a lot of sense. But, um, but yeah, the way that it, the way this episode ended with Matt's dad saying he's alive, I FaceTimed him. I'm like, what? We saw Dexter kill him. He shut the he shut him up. <laughs> he's like Slater, dude. Like, like trying to be all hipster and he killed him. So, I'm interested where this is gonna go. Um, but uh, but yeah. It's a great episode, though. Definitely a great episode. A lot happens within the hour. I enjoyed this. To me, there's not. We are into three episodes, and there's no filler to me. <clears throat> it just keeps going, and I like that. So, Fantastic for ten episodes, <laughs> thirteen I can see filler, but for or twelve I can see filler. As long as there's no filler, like have it correlate to the story at hand. Like just continue on with the story. I don't have any filler, but then again, that's that's the that's the plus size to a small town. There's not much really you can do without well, unless everybody doesn't know about it. So there, that's the plus of being set in a small town. There's not much that can go on without anybody like not knowing it. So oh, you're, yeah, so you muted your that's phone. gonna be it for the show as far as everything goes. Um. I'm not going to do the tags or anything like that for tonight. But if you want to follow us and all that other stuff, all the links are provided in the uh, description below. Go on ahead. If you like this, click the link. I mean, click that thumbs up. Don't forget to go on ahead and hit that subscribe bo- uh, button on the bottom right hand corner and that bell to allow you guys to know when there's something new going on. But thank you again, Charlie. It's always a great to be able to, to do this Dexter after show. So with that being said, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. I can't wait to do this again. And I can't wait to get back on track for next Monday to do the Dexter after show. And, and I'll everybody do a have a great you, John. Um, tune in on Friday because you may be wondering, wait, isn't there a Marvel show that just premiered on Disney plus? Yes, there is the very first two episodes of Hawkeye. Yes. We're finally getting Hawkeye is actually now on Disney plus and well, it's looking like we will be doing our after show for the first two episodes of Hawkeye on Friday at the same time, uh, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, forgot the Pacific time. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that Six one. O'clock. Six o'clock Pacific. Yeah. So if you're interested in what our thoughts on the first two episodes of Hawkeye, tune in until Friday. But yeah, so that those two episodes are out now and. It's only this one time that we're talking about two episodes on the first show because it's supposed to be just one episode a week. But they want to, because like, it's Thanksgiving, they want to surprise us with two episodes. So tune into that. <laughs> right. And this is basically our Thanksgiving episode. So thank you so much for the 542 subscribers. And always until next time, guys, have a great and safe Thanksgiving. I hope you do too, Charlie. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving with your family and loved mm-hmm. ones. And be back over here again on Friday. Always until next time, guys. It's been real. It's been fun. Can't wait to do this again.